Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on social media influencers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. You may not have heard of many social media influencers, but millions of other people have. They can command hefty incomes and are major celebrities in their own right. But sometimes the influence they have on their fans can have unexpected and undesirable consequences. A huge crowd estimated at 3,000 to 5,000, mostly high school students and young people, flooded into Union Square on Friday afternoon, August 4th, for gaming electronics giveaways by influencer Kai Sinat. The impromptu event dissolved into chaos when some in the crowd turned violent. Dozens were arrested, including Sinat, and dozens injured. He later apologized, saying that what happened was not his intention. It stunned many in the media and city government, but it didn't surprise New York Post lifestyle and entertainment reporter Asia Grace. She says the Bronx social media star has a fervent fan base. Kai Sinat is the young boys, the young generations, Beyonce, if you will, hence the swarm of people that went down there to see him at Union Square Park. He has so many followers in the 20 millions, and as soon as they heard he would be there, I knew that they would come running. The allure and draw of a social media influencer like Kai Sinat and others is powerful in a deeply personal way. Influencers today can have superstar status, says Asia Grace. Social media influencers are celebrities. They're on the same level as the movie stars and the singers and the athletes. They no longer have to aspire to that. They're currently the ones that are moving the culture and influencing the singers and influencing the movies and the scripts and the things that we see in mass media. And social media is king. There's a basic reason social media influencers can connect with audiences that are beyond the reach of expensive slick marketing and ad campaigns, says University of Michigan marketing professor Marcus Collins. Nothing's more influential to people than people, their people. So when influencers, these people who have uh, great media weight because of their number of followers, when they create a catalyst, it begins to cascade through a network effect of people who see the world similarly. And that's culture in action. Kai Sinat became a symbol to his followers that they too could be seen and heard and become successful no matter where they're from, says therapist Dr. Randy Sconyers. He's mastered the art of engagement, authenticity. I'm in my basement. I'm from where you're from. So now you can aspire and ascend to where I am. You can do the same thing. So what's driving this phenomenon? Let's find out what our panel has to say. So joining us for this conversation is Asia Grace. She's a New York Post reporter specializing in entertainment and lifestyle. Asia, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate it. Also with us is Dr. Marcus Collins. He's a marketing professor at the University of Michigan. And may we call you Marcus or Dr. Marcus? Nah, Marcus is good. Thanks. Marcus. You. All right, Marcus, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Also with us is Dr. Randy Sconyers. You know him on Instagram as Dr. S. He's a therapist, licensed therapist, and also the founder of Mental Hop, using hip hop to try and improve the mental health particularly of boys and young men. Uh, Dr. Randy, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. We, we really appreciate it. Asia, when you first heard about what was going on in Union Square, what was your reaction? Honestly, I wasn't surprised. I mean, Kai C. Net to the Gen Z boy is what Diet Cola was to moms in the 90s, okay? Like, they love him. They He is literally their world. He's their Beyonce, hence the swarm of thousands who descended upon Union Square Park. I mean, this guy is a 21-year-old guy from the Bronx. He's amassed a followership of over 20, mil, 24 million people across all his uh, popular social media platforms. So him saying, hey, I'm going to be somewhere and I'm giving away free merch, like, people are going to pull up. I mean, he was offering PCs and microphones and uh, uh, PlayStation. So I was not shocked at all that thousands of kids just ran out there wanting a moment with this guy who's had such an impact in such a little bit of time. Since 2021, he's taken off and he's had a number of viral videos on gaming, skits. Um, he's had a, a lot of interviews with major steppers in hip hop, including NLE Choppa, Ice Spice, little Uzi Vert, so it was not a shock to me at all, but it was a oh. really rough scene to watch. <laughs> no, it was, uh, we were, I was there. It was, it was pretty interesting. And, and also too, like a lot of the, like the vast majority of the crowd to me, it was, you know, cause I've seen, I'm always at a lot of different mass events. A lot of the people that, a lot of the people were there, of course it was boys and young men, 
but a lot of them were high school students or middle school students. So there was Friday afternoon in the summer, no school, hot day, like you said, free merch. What's not to uh, want to, you know, hop the train and get out there or jump the train and get there. Marcus, were you surprised by the, the, the huge turnout that this was? Not surprised by the turnout, uh, disappointed in the outcomes, but not surprised because Lisa, you, 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 you put together the math very, very clearly. The calculus was very clear. All the conditions set for what was going to be uh, a, a, an uproar. Kai has great influence for sure with a, with a, with a, a large group of people. But it was the network effect among those people that brought what well, we started with a few hundred to thousands and the environment in which it happened, like a construction site left for a lot of material that could be used for destruction. Not only that, to your point, it's the summertime in New York, it's a Friday, it's turn up. All of these different conditions create for what unfortunately becomes an, uh, a, a disastrous scenario. Um, so was I surprised? No. And then there's always going to be a small, I mean, my experience has always been, whether it's protests, whether it's something like this, there's always going to be a small element. As soon as they see a crowd, they use that crowd as kind of cover to do whatever they want to do anyway, yeah. whether it's, you know, it, shooting off firecrackers, picking up construction debris and throwing it at the police or at the, the other people that had, had turned out there. Um, Randy, Dr. S, when you were, when you heard about this, what is this phenomenon? Like what, what in somebody like a Kai Sinat, and still such passion, especially with, with boys and young men. Yes, first of all, let's make sure we're clear. It's not all youth, just like you said. So there's usually a handful of people. And I think what Kai Sinat is, these young men see themselves in him. They are him, essentially. This is a kid from the Bronx who made it big. And here's their opportunity to meet what would be their sort of hero or their opportunity to to reach where he's at. So he he makes the call, everybody comes out, and before you know it, the cameras are out, and this is our opportunity, because that's what Kai Sinat does. He's an influencer. He uses his character, he uses his uh, personality to attract the masses. So now here's my opportunity as a young man for all those cameras to come out. Young ladies as well, all the youth that were out there, you saw the cameras happening as well. So here's an opportunity for my viral moment. Stay with us, there's more to come. Asia, when you look at the different groups of social media influencers, there's a lot of people that do all kinds of extraordinary things and hire very expensive consultants to try to even reach that million mark. How do you think Kai Sinat did that? I think Kai kind of, you know, broke the code here. He literally took himself videos of himself, his live streams of uh, playing video games and talking with his friends and making jokes and talking about women. And he took that to the next level. And the reason why so many young men and women, Gen Z's are attracted to that is because that's literally their, their goal. That's their dream. I mean, what boy wouldn't want to make millions and have you know fans around the world and have relationships with rappers and and instagram models all from playing video games and talking spicy online so he really is the goal exactly my marcus is this a shift though in, in terms of what people want career-wise because a lot of people don't understand you know you have influencers who are don't have anywhere near that many followers and they're making a very comfortable 75 to hundred thousand dollars a year rarely leaving their apartment or their house. Well, this is what technology does. It extends human behavior. It extends what is possible. This job didn't exist 30 years ago because the technology wasn't as such that it became haveable. And we start seeing people who look like me, who are reflective of my cultural subscription, are able to pursue these, these career ambitions, it becomes desirable. In many cases, we saw that through sports. In many cases, we saw that through music. And you get a similar sort of dopamine hit from that. Not only are, do you get the financial reward from being an influencer in, in the colloquial term in which we use it today, uh, but you also get notoriety, you get visibility, you 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 get shine, you get clout. Randy, in terms of the, the you talk about uh, the, the young men, especially, they could see themselves in him and the fact that he's coming from the Bronx, he's not coming from, you know, Beverly Hills or or some super affluent community. How important is that to to these boys and young men, especially? 
it's so important. You're thinking about what happens at this stage of trying to find who you are. And now you have a, a young man who has done the same things you do on a regular basis, play video games, try to listen to hip hop. As we celebrate the 50th year of hip hop culture, we have to talk about Kai Sadat is in that space. And he's talking to rappers. He's, he's listening to music. He's reviewing music. And now here you are, you're seeing that same energy into the streets. When he makes that call, the kids are coming out like, this is my opportunity. I think this is a, a bigger picture here because do we have enough spaces where kids can be seen and be heard? When you have to go to the extreme to try to get attention, this could be a, a, a example of other things that could be really going on in our young people that we really need to pay attention to. And Kai Sanat is right there. When he's able to get that those kids to come out in those types of numbers, we really have to pay attention to his influence and how we can sort of utilize that to really make the changes we want to see in our young people. And I think we saw that when we talked, when we could see his response. There was a lot of remorse in what he said. Um, if he was able to do it again, he would do it differently for sure. Marcus, in, in, in terms of marketing, we've seen some spectacular failures with social media platforms that try to reach certain groups and get all the money, they get the top talent, and then they just, they flop and they don't catch on. Other ones catch on very fast and then, you know, become controversial. There's different fads. There, some of them are changing their names now. Mm -hmm. What do you think, are, what determines which platform that somebody is going to use? us, we determine it, people. Because what is social media? By definition, it's the media of people. Social is people, social justice, social action, social work, social networks. It's all about people. And the technologies that we use help propagate the media of people. This is the important part for marketers is that people trust people more than any form of marketing communication, more than print, television, radio. In fact, we trust strangers more than we trust marketers, which should be super sobering for marketers, right? We trust Sexy Lover 24 from Denver on Amazon more than we trust the brand from which we might be buying their product. And what these technologies have done have created the town square of sorts of my people that I'm able to observe the behavior of people like me and they become votes that, that dictate what is acceptable behavior for us. And as a result, we move. Asia, are we in kind of an anti-celebrity celebrity world right now? I mean, I think we're in a, everyone's a celebrity world right now. Anyone can literally build an account, build a following on any platform. If you um, have a lot to say and you are a good writer, you can be a Twitter star. If you're really pretty and you can take nice pictures and you know, you're know you in all these exotic places, you can be an Instagram star. If you're really witty or you have some fun skits or a family dynamic or something really kitschy and catchy, you could be a TikTok star, YouTube star. You know, So anybody and everybody can be something. And I think that that's really what's driving the bus behind this influencer movement is that we all have the potential to be a Kai Sinet. We all have a potential to be an Addison Ray, and what am I not doing to get there? Well, I'm going to do everything to get there. So I'm going to do the most outrageous thing. I'm going to eat, say, like, you know, wear the most crazy, out of the po out of pocket thing in order to get those eyes on me. And um, that can be dangerous. We've seen a number of instances where people doing these extreme things for that social media clout have it's gone. Things have gone very wrong and. Similarly, with this Kai Sinet moment, things have gone very wrong. What about the influence on people's mental health? Because in the one, on the one hand, you can look at like Kai Sinet and say, okay, here's this guy from the Bronx, young guy. He's, you know, he's didn't have anything handed to him for sure. And he's built this whole career. He's built this following. Is that a good role model for success or does it invite comparisons that can be, you know, tough for people that are a little bit fragile to, to handle? That's a great point, Lisa. Look, Kai Sanat shoots content from his basement and in his house. Think about most of our kids who want to play video games. They see that, and there's a great opportunity there. He has mastered what I say is engagement, the level of engagement, trust, authenticity, being real to these young people. So, of course, to them, they see him as the ultimate person to follow and to look up to. Coming from where we come from, and being able to um, ascend to that level, absolutely. But like you said, not everybody has the mental and emotional intelligence to be able to handle 
all that information, all that data, all that content that's downloaded on a regular basis from him. So as a result of that, especially during adolescent stages where decision-making, judgment, all those things come into play, we see a lot of fragility. We see a lot of young people engaging in behaviors and things that are extremely detrimental to them because what comes with this level of influence has to be a level of responsibility as well. And sadly and unfortunately, all our young people aren't ready for that. That event was extremely traumatic. I don't think we're talking enough about that part of it as well. Yes, the kids came out in, in, in huge numbers, but there were a lot of victims there as well. There were a lot of people who were hurt and injured. And as a result of that, what, are the, what is the traumatic impact on their mental health as well? You're talking about a couple of months before we go into a school year, there were young people there who were definitely impacted in many ways as a result of that event. So I think that even though there was apology, there was some remorse, um, we can't just um, brush under the rug that there were a lot of people and young people there that are going to be um, thinking about that particular event for many, many years to come. Asia, is social media changing, changing our society? What kind of society we have, our values? 100% um, where we used to be somewhat considerate of, of one another, not to say that that was every person in every group. However, there was a lot of consideration. Now, anyone and every and anyone and everyone is doing anything that they want. Um, we recently saw, you know, people taking over Target to shoot content. We see people, you know, licking toilet seats on an airplane. There's no limit to what can happen. Um, so if there was ever a desire for decorum in the society it's now gone um and unfortunately uh there's the you know social media the space is still the, very much so the wild wild west is fairly new to a lot of people and to gen z who's now coming up and kind of taking it over they're just kind of moving you know out of you know this kind of impulse there's no thought and i don't think it, it, even in kai's case that he gave a whole lot of thought to what was happening here when he told everyone to come down there now in that video he did say like listen y'all you're in new york i know how y'all get y'all can violate y'all can get crazy y'all can get wild he at least acknowledged that there could be some you know catastrophe attached to this event however he still went forward with it um without making the proper arrangements having the proper security marcus do you feel your university professor at a prestigious institution, do you feel that social media is making us dumber as Americans? No, I think that that's that's uh that's probably a, a bit of a pejorative. We can look at people and say, "Oh, they stupid," but like our parents have said for generations, if your friend jump off of a bridge, you're gonna jump too. Yep, right. <laughs> and I jumped too, just like all of us did. Right. It's in our nature to be influenced by our people. The technology extends that thing, much like the wheels extensions of the foot, clothes are extensions of the skin, glasses extensions of the eyes. Social networking platforms are extensions of real life networks. And people who are dumb tend to be friends with people who are dumb and they collectively do dumb things. People who are a bit more acculturated and a bit more, uh, have more intellectual savviness, they tend to make different decisions. It's not about the individual referent, it's about the social group and how they collectively make meaning and behave accordingly. And what, what the social group is. Um, doc, Dr. Ress, in terms of how it shapes a young person's interactions with people in real life, I mean, there's there's people, I'm sure you've all you've all had this, somebody who's like just mouthing off, like, like just crazy on social media. And then in person, they're like super shy and quiet. And you're right. like, wait a minute, that's the person that was just like that tear right. right. on, uh, you know, in the comments section. Right. Like, like, because like, this gives this gives you an opportunity to be uh, something that you may not really be talking about your self identity and who you are. I can be extremely confident on these social media platforms. I could be bigger than who I really am because I don't really have to worry about that immediate feedback when I'm right next to somebody. So because of that, you get a lot of impulsive behavior and you also get a lot of um, lack of consequential thinking, meaning I'm gonna do these things and I don't wanna worry about what could happen or what could go wrong later on because in the moment, I'm getting that instant feedback. I'm tough, I, I feel good. And because of that, I'm just gonna keep going, going, going with that way. But as a result of that, we know that that could do a lot of damage because that's not really who you are.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on social media influencers. You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.